you know, we're taxed on every side. We're taxed. If you, if you have a job, the, your paycheck is taxed. You pay your house note. Your property tax is taxed. Your mud is taxed. The water, the gas, the lights, and your cell phones. Just taxed. So it's not fun to see the tax man. But the good news is that Zacchaeus had a desire to see Jesus. Church, when we come to church with a desire to see Jesus, we are putting ourselves in position to receive Jesus. Just like anything else, we desire, we make ready to receive it. We prepare for it. Days in advance. That's how we should be when we come into the presence of the Lord. We should be like David in, in Psalms 1, 22. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of y'all glad this morning? Y'all just sitting there. Come on, let's worship this morning. If not, if you can't, you don't have anything to be glad about. Just remember this. It could have been you sleeping outdoors with no food to eat and no clothes. But God didn't see fit to let any of that, those things be for you. So that's why when we get, get to church, we ought to be glad to be in here. Remember that Jesus was passing through and everybody wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus was a man who was not tall, but he was little in stature. And because of the crowd, he could not see Jesus. He just wanted to see Jesus. And all the taller people, all, the, all the, 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 the selfish people didn't want to make way for him. However, the Bible says that Zacchaeus took off, he ran ahead, and climbed into a sycamore tree. Now that's a funny thing to me because you don't see very many rich people or people who think they have some money running anywhere. They're not climbing up into no tree. You can't. It's just like a parade that we have on for Martin Luther King or whenever, you know, some people, if you're not there first, you don't get to see up front. You have to move about and go around or climb on something or into a building to see. However, God knows who really has a desire to see him. Now I understand why Pastor Monroe prays in the office before we come out often that 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 when we come out here that y'all don't see us. But y'all see through us and around us in order to see Jesus. Because, because, because it's not about us. When the choir sings, it's not about them. I know we come and we sit and we look for everybody to entertain us and we're going to make y'all feel good, but that's not why you come to church. That's not why you come to church. We come to church and y'all still looking like, what's going on? I hope y'all are paying attention. You, we need to have a desire to see Jesus. To, when you have a desire to see Jesus, it really does put you in a position so that Jesus can see you. And the other thing we should do, God, to get God's attention, you should want to praise him. You know, this morning the choir was singing real hard, and most people just looked, and they just looked and looked. But your desire is to see Jesus and to get his attention. So if you're not worshiping God, then, hey, y'all just wasting time. Y'all wasting time. God knows who really wants to see him. And, 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 and it's real simple. God gave us some instructions. It's real simple. If there is some real simple instructions, the Bible says that we must enter into his gates with thanksgiving and in his, to his courts with praise. 
and bless his holy name. Y'all, I'm almost done. I'm not trying to take up all your time. But when Jesus come by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and he called him by his name. He never seen Zacchaeus, but when Jesus, when Jesus get and see you, he can call you by your name. That means that he's an all-knowing God. So he knows everything that we do, everything we don't do, and what you're thinking about right now. Zacchaeus was a sinner. And he received the Lord joyfully. And of course, all he said to him, uh, all, all, I'm sorry, of course, all, so to save people, um, went, okay, back up real quick. When he stopped to talk to Jesus, and Jesus decided to go to his house, everybody else complained that he was a sinner. Yeah, he going to a sinner house. Well, sinners need Jesus, too. <laughs> Verse 8 says that whenever you meet Jesus, there is, a, there is a change made. So if you say you met Jesus and you don't feel a change, you don't change your, your, your community, your, the people that you hang around, you, we ought to be the example. They ought to want to hang around us and let us show them the way. So much so that Zacchaeus repents. When he comes down, he immediately repents. And he makes things right with the Lord and the people. He tells the Lord that he's going to give half of his money. He's a rich man. He said, I'm going to give half of my money to the poor people. And if I've cheated anybody out of some money, right. I'm going to give them back four times what I got from them. And that's good news. So y'all just think about it. If, if our government, who I feel cheats us out of a lot of, us, a lot of stuff, yes. they make decisions for us that they don't have to deal with. Like our benefits. You don't have to, when they feel like they have money, and they don't have to have the benefits, so it don't, they can care less what really happens. But what they don't understand is, is that without God on your side, you can have all the money, all the riches. That, can, that cannot give you health, and it cannot give you strength. So if they're sick, their money can't save them. Only God's healing power can save them. So if we need, if we need, if we need peace, God really is the supplier of it. If you need just a little love, y'all looking all sad, if you need a little love, Jesus has that for you. He has it. Why y'all looking so sad this morning? Jesus, the Son of Man, he came to seek and to save those who are lost. God wants all of us to be saved. The old people put it like this. Y'all better come on and get on the morning train. Because the evening train just might be too late. Y'all waiting around to give y'all life to Christ. Or to totally surrender your life to Christ. I know we know Jesus by his name. But we have, most of us don't know him as Lord. Because we know him by his name, Jesus, but that really don't mean that we have a relationship with him. When you have a relationship with him, then you'll call him Lord. And when you call him Lord, you'll change the way you do things. We must be, we got to be born again. And you know, maybe somebody's in here is like the prodigal son. He wasted all his time and all of his money in the world. But when he realized that he can do nothing without God, 
He repented and he came home to his daddy. And because he came home to his daddy, his daddy received him. And the Bible said that he put him on the road. A ring made of gold. They barbecued a calf. They gave him something, and then he gave him something he never had. The song said he gave him restoration. We need restoration. Who need restoration? We need restoration. I mean... God is waiting with wide open arms. He's waiting with wide open arms. He wants to save each and every one of us. He wants to restore us. Now, verse 29, I'm skipping down to verse 29 now. Now, I'm really almost done. Jesus is now about to enter into Jerusalem. And when he gets to Bethany, he sends two of his disciples ahead. And he gives them some instructions. He tells them to go into the village. And when you get there, in the village, there you will find a young donkey. Tied up that no one has ever ridden. Simply untied it, the donkey, and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you untying the coat or the donkey, just say, the Lord has need of it. This is a good lesson right here. Whenever God tells you to do something, he usually tells you how to do it. It's real simple. You just do what he say do. No matter how foolish it look or how crazy it sounds, just do it. Because whatever problem you run into, Pastor Morrow, after 55 years and after us following you trying to build this building and you following God, we know that God, if God directs you through this way, he's going to take care of you all the way. Fifty-five years is really a long side, long time. It really is a long time. That's much longer than I was born, or as I, if I've been living. <laughs> Brother Michael, Pastor Morrow would say right about now, "Amen." All by myself. And so here it is. That problem that I had. Without Jesus, now that I have Jesus, that I could not solve, I just turned it over to Jesus, and he worked it out. That's what we got to learn to do, turn our problem. Well, you can't turn it over if you don't know who to take it to. Pastor Monroe, since this is your anniversary, I understand now that you could not have come this far had not the Lord God sent you. I thank God that you obey God or that you always obey God. We don't understand why Pastor Morrow said we can and can't. But that's why, y'all look, it's, the church is big and it's half full. But the Lord, because he followed God's direction, obeyed him every step of the way. God is providing for us. And without faith, Pastor Monroe, I do understand that you couldn't have made it 84 years doing anything, especially living. There's so much, you know, and that's my, that's my real, that's my biological father. I've never seen him down, no worse than a common cold or some small pains. He's in his, he's in his right mind. And he